In modern football, speed and acceleration is everything. This is the Border Collie, a fast, agile canine bred to be explosive and turn on a dime. Question is, can I beat this marvelous animal in a foot race? Of course I can't. To improve, I've sought the help of the master of speed and acceleration. So, Carsten, acceleration, how are we going to do this? Uh, today, actually, what I'm going to show you is a little bit of theory. Mm -hmm. But why is it so important? Why do we need this so much in, in football? Uh, then uh, have a look at you, how you start running. Maybe I see a couple of things and then we can see how to, to improve it. And then we will do some, some drills that I'm showing you how you can improve your speed, how you can become the fastest player you can possibly be. Right, but, but why is acceleration so important in football? Acceleration is so important. We do about more than 1,000 accelerations in every single game. So really? when we have 90 minutes game, we have about 10 every, every minute. So basically it's nine, 900 to 1,000 uh, acceleration moves. And that means in all directions, forward, side, back, cross. So we have a, a lot of these kind of movements in, in, in the game. And therefore, this is so key that we are the fastest as possible. So what, what's, what's like the secret behind then a good acceleration? The secret is that it's not only your legs, it's a complete body. We need to accelerate from the feet. The whole body needs to support, the arms need to support. Only if the whole body is working with you, then you can be as fast as possible in acceleration. So, how was it? How bad no, was, was I? It was good. No, 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 it was not bad. Actually, it was one thing I was surprised that you would not do it because usually what, what is happening that most of the, the players or the, the athletes that they would move the foot back. So they lift the foot and move it back first. Okay? And you did it very good. The foot stayed on the ground and you were starting from there. So that was, was excellent. Okay. Uh, what wasn't so good then? <laughs> and there, there's, a, there's a couple of things. One thing is, I mean, it's not very often that we do this as a football player that we're standing like this. Uh -huh. But your foot was, uh, the left foot was standing in front. That would mean that the right hand has to be in the front and the left hand in the back. Because what is happening next? Next is happening, the right knee is coming and uh -huh. it would need the, the left hand. So if the left hand is in, in the back, you can swing it forward and can support, okay? Right. And it also, it will pull up your body in a more straight position. Because what happened is that you kept a little bit low when you started, okay? What I mean with low, you should be in a complete straight position, but you were going into this position, that this leg was not fully stretched. So that's one of the things. So when you start, you have to be very explosive coming from this foot. This foot is pushing you actually off so that you're jumping into, into the acceleration, okay? So you have to be very powerful on the foot, which is the front foot in this kind of start. Uh -huh. And then the next thing is, of course, the frequency. Frequency is the most important for, for running, or one of the, the two things which are very important. For example, when Usain Bolt is running 100 meters, he's running with 42 steps. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. But 42 steps in 9.58 seconds, that means he's taking four to five steps every single second. That's a lot. And he's doing this from the beginning. From the start, he's working with his frequency and he's accelerating where every single step is becoming a little bit longer. Okay, so the frequency, that's the key thing of acceleration. And that is what we can do also in football. But it doesn't mean necessarily the smaller the steps, the faster you are. You see, you're a little bit shorter than I am. So I will have, I will have longer steps than you have. Uh -huh. I will have less steps than you have, but still I can be faster with, with a lower frequency. So we have to find the right combination of steps per second times the length of the step. But how do I then improve my frequency? That's the question. The frequency, I will show you some drills today, how you can do this. We use the agility ladder for this because that's a perfect tool when we want to increase the frequency of the steps. I'm ready, let's do this. So this drill number one, I want you to do. This is just that you have two contacts in each box, okay? What we're trying to do here is that you learn how to increase the frequency so that your body, your nervous system, learns this kind of, of move. 
But the ladder is only the preparation for the sprint, okay? So you are, after that, you always go with the sprint, four or five meters, because on the pitch, there's no ladder. This is also why I don't want you to be as fast as possible in the ladder, but as fast as possible outside the ladder when you start sprinting. Then you go as fast as possible. In the ladder, you go as good as possible, uh -huh. okay? okay? So I will demonstrate you first uh -huh. what to do, okay? So said, you start from here. You have two contacts in each box. And then you accelerate, okay? You saw that I was in a very high position. So what I don't want you to do, to go like this, mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> because here, you're not really stretching your leg, and that is what you would need in the sprint, okay? So what I want you to do that you're always coming into this stretch position, so therefore you remain in a high position, and then you go into the sprint. Mm -hmm. okay. okay? So one one touch. Two per contacts. Foot. Two yes. contacts in so each like box. This. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. And when you say, you know, it has to go into my nervous system, yes. that means that basically when I get good at this, I shouldn't think about the frequency. Uh, exactly. It exactly. should be that, just automatic. That's the thing. The nervous system it memorizes what we're doing. So when we do this in training, then of course at one point it can also memorize during the game, then I don't have to think about it, then I don't have to waste concentration on how I run, but then I can focus on the game. <clears throat> because we have only a limited resource of, of concentration and we have to, to put it on the game rather than on the movements. <clears throat> Good. And also here you see there's a little bit of what we call transition phase. Transition phase means you come from this movement, you go into another movement. The sprint is a little bit different, right? And in between, your brain needs a little split of a second to change the movement. It's a little difficult. And for you, I can see there's a little bit of a, of a break uh -huh. from one into the next. And the, the less of a break we have, the faster we can, can move. So what can I do to, to minimize the break? Actually, you don't need to do anything, only training. Okay. Because your brain will do this for you. It's just doing something it hasn't done before. So therefore it needs some experience. So therefore the more often you do this, uh, the better the brain knows what you want it to do. And then of course it's becoming easier. So right. it's just a matter of training. Repetition, repetition, repetition. This is how, how you improve this. Drill number two. You do the same thing basically. But now you go two boxes forward, one back. Okay. Okay, what I want you to do, you have two contacts in each box. I'm gonna mess this up. Okay. <laughs> okay, and but still the, keeping upright. But, but the thing is, don't try to be as fast as mm. possible in the ladder. Doesn't matter if you start slowly. It's the same when you started writing at school, you would write the letters slowly, and now you know how to do it, it goes faster. Mm. So always start slowly, start as good as possible. Yes, that's good. <coughs> and then the run, yes, good. Excellent. Okay, there's one thing you can do a little bit more in the, in the ladder, that you come a bit more into the stretch, because now your leg position is like, like this. And I will demonstrate to you why this is so important. Because if you stand in that position, can you put your foot a little bit back? And now you fully stretch your leg. And now you try to lean forward. Can you? No. You can't, exactly. Because this muscle will hold your upper body. Uh -huh. But the moment the leg is not fully stretched, yeah. now I can f move forward, right? So if the muscle here is stretched, the upper body is also stretched. So basically, when you push off, it's about stretching those exactly, legs. Exactly, exactly. Right. That's the key thing, and that is what you learn here, that you always try to be in the full stretch of the leg. You see, my leg is fully stretched here. Let me try one okay. more time. That's better, good. Yes, good. <laughs> Excellent. That felt better. Yeah. Also the, the whole transition. Be because this is, when you're already in this position in the ladder, 
you will also start sprinting uh -huh. in that position, okay? Uh -huh. When you're in this position, then it's easier also to, to start sprinting with a more upright, with a more straight position. So that when I know key. this and I get, I accelerate, yeah. then I, and I learn to flex my hip yeah. up, then I will automatically be upright then, when then I sprint. Exactly. Then it's easier. That is the key, guys. So there you have it, my friends. Some very good tips on how you can improve your overall explosiveness and acceleration by improving your power output, your body positioning, and your steps frequency. But what should we teach you next? Well, you should let us know what to look at in terms of improving your speed in the comment section right down below. Then of course, also don't forget, you can go and learn some very wicked football skills in the playlist right down there. And don't forget to make sure you subscribe with the bell notifications on before you leave either. And now, I feel faster than everyone. Except for Carsten's dog, maybe. Signing off, cheerio.